March, herring spawn along the eastern shores of Vancouver Island. And every March, a commercial fishery harvests about 20% of the herring returning to spawn. It's a highly controversial fishery. That's because herring are the foundation of our marine ecosystem. Everything depends on them. Marine birds, whales, dolphins, sea lions, salmon, halibut, and so many other fish. And because of the five herring fishery districts on the BC coast, four have been overfished to the point they are now closed. The Salish Sea hosts the last viable fishery. However, even here, herring stocks are down for the fourth consecutive year. Given all this, I just had to come and see for myself. It's mid-March and I've just driven into Parksville on the eastern shores of Vancouver Island. I'm looking for herring spawn and the herring fishery. Just a few days ago, I was floating in my kayak amid the chaos of a herring spawn along the coast of nearby Hornby Island. That experience made it so clear to me that the herring are an essential foundation to the entire marine ecosystem of the Salish Sea. And now I'm back and looking for more. And I think I've just bumped into another spawn. Across the bay and to the north, toward the red roofs of French Creek, I see a thick swirl of gulls. So I get back in my car and head that way. I get to French Creek Boat Harbor and look around. I want to see what the gulls are up to, so I walk to the breakwater. A huge flock of gulls is feeding in the surf. And just offshore, eagles and herds of sea lions are amid hundreds of gulls. To have this much life together, there just has to be a herring spawn underway. I head for the breakwater near the harbor entrance. I'm stunned. Dozens of sea lions are hauled out on the breakwater. And there are eagles. <laughs> what a hub of wild nature and human activity. There are some anglers at the other end of the breakwater. They're catching what appear to be herring, so I go over to take a look. Yes, definitely herring. So the herring must be spawning, but just to be sure, I'd like to see some herring eggs. So I look across at the nearby beach. It's covered with gulls, and I'm betting they're feeding on herring eggs, so I head that way. The gulls are just thick. And sure enough, there are herring eggs everywhere. I head into the shallows and lower my underwater camera. The water is just filled with a sparkling tumble of herring eggs. So that's what the gulls are eating. I pause and look around. That herring are the foundation to the marine ecosystem in the Salish Sea is just obvious which makes me realize something else is very obvious. Herring are the keystone species for the economy of BC's coastal communities. Herring feed everything. Without herring, our halibut, hake, and salmon fisheries suffer, the salmon sport fishery suffers, and the whale watching industry suffers. Further offshore, I see a fish boat heading into French Creek. I look back at the harbor. I really need to go back and take a closer look. So I head that way. The harbor is busy with boats and their crews. It looks like much of the activity relates to the herring fishery. I head for the harbor mouth, where fish boats are coming and going. Most of the fish boats appear to be part of the herring fleet. Many are big seine boats whose catching power is simply overwhelming. A seine boat can pull in as much as 50 tons of herring in a single haul of the net, stripping the ocean of half a million herring at a time. There are also lots of smaller herring boats, part of the gillnet fleet. I watch the boats come in, heading over towards the fish plant. So I head that way. 
A seine boat is pulled up at the fish plant. The crew is organizing the big net and I watch them do their work. I really respect these guys. They're out in all types of weather and they know the ocean and fish firsthand. But as fish stocks get overfished, big boats replace small, licenses are concentrated and fishing gets higher tech, the number of fishers employed is falling fast. With four of five herring fisheries closed on our coast, that's a lot of jobs lost. So I go to the fish plant to see what's being offloaded. A seine boat is connected to the fish plant with a big vacuum hose that moves herring to a conveyor belt. As I watch the tons of dead herring roll off, I just feel a great sense of frustration. Within this huge catch, only the eggs of mature females will be eaten by humans. The rest, equivalent by weight to nearly 9 out of every 10 herring, is collateral damage, bycatch, bound to be ground into fish meal for fish farms or garden fertilizer. Yet, it's illegal in Canada to catch fish for fish meal because it's both ecologically and economically wasteful. But the fisheries minister exempts the herring fishery because of the commercial value of the eggs. They are shipped to Asia as a delicacy food. And something else disturbs me. Unlike salmon, herring can spawn seven or eight times over their lifetimes. But all that future spawning potential is lost with this fishery. And there are other repercussions. Young herring rely on older herring for knowledge, such as where to spawn. But the herring fishery over the years has caught most of the older fish, removing critical memory. For many experts, this loss of knowledge explains why herring no longer spawn in many old spawning locations. They simply have forgotten where to go. So I leave. There's just so much to think about. What I do know is that herring underpin the rich marine vitality of the Salish Sea. And that, that means everything to me. And I know too that the herring contribute way more to BC's economy left in the ocean to feed other species than caught and processed. The herring fishery is barely profitable. Yet this tiny herring fishery is allowed to jeopardize an entire coastal economy of sport and commercial fishing and whale watching worth well over half a billion dollars annually. So herring stocks are down this year again. And the fisheries minister has approved a 20% catch again. The minister seems willing to manage herring by flirting with collapse while knowing that that same strategy has failed in her four other BC herring fisheries. But opposition is mounting. 53 communities on Vancouver Island, First Nations, conservation groups, and the local member of parliament are all asking the minister to cut the harvest rate in half or to completely close the fishery until a herring recovery plan is in place. The good thing about herring is that if you give them half a chance, they bounce back. So I walk on. All I know is it's time for action.